Have you ever wondered how your brain gets supplied with blood? Hello and welcome back to another video of the Brainy Heart. In this video, we'll be talking about the Circle of Willis. For starters, the Circle of Willis is a system of arteries that supply the brain with blood. So let me start off by pointing out all the arteries that can be found in the Circle of Willis. These systems of arteries form a thing that looks like a man. You can see the legs, the hands, the face. Let me start off. Let me start off by pointing out the ICA or the internal carotid artery. And the ICA is this area right here. The ICA, I C A. The abbreviation for internal carotid artery is I C A or like I like to call it ICA. But the actual artery is called the internal carotid artery. It actually branches off from the common carotid artery. And there's another artery called the middle cerebral artery, which can be found right here. And it's abbreviated as M C A. The next artery that I want to talk about is the anterior cerebral artery. And it can be found right here. And we can go ahead and abbreviate it as ACA. That's what many people use as its abbreviation. And between both the anterior arteries, there's something called the anterior communicating, which is this artery right there. And it's abbreviated as AC. The next artery that I want to talk about is the posterior cerebral artery, which is found right here and here. And just so you know, I'm just get providing a basic overview of, uh, overview of all the arteries that you can find in the Circle of Willis. I'll be going into more depth on what they do and where they take the blood to later in this video, so stay tuned for that. But like I was saying, these two areas, these two arteries are called the posterior cerebral artery, or the PCA. And this area over here is called the posterior communicating. So let's go ahead and abbreviate that as PC. So coming down to the bottom half of the circle of Willis, we have the superior cerebellar artery. Now remember, there is a difference between cerebellar and cerebral. Normally, cerebellar is related to the cerebellum and cerebral is to the rest of the brain. So normally when something has a cerebellar after it, it normally means, after or before it, it normally means that it's been, it's going to the cerebellum. So just a quick tip there. It's really easy for you guys to get confused between cerebral and cerebellar. So it, that's an easier way to remember it, as cerebellar is to cerebellum and cerebral is to the rest of the brain. Anyways, coming back to the arteries, we have the superior cerebellar artery right under the posterior cerebral, posterior cerebral artery. And the superior cerebellar artery is abbreviated as SCA. Going down, we have the ICA which is found right here. The ICA stands for the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. And below the ICA is the PICA or P-I-C-A. So like I was saying, these arteries are called the PICA and that's the abbreviation for posterior inferior cerebellar artery. And I also wanted to, to point out three more arteries and these three arteries in my opinion are the three main arteries that are part of the circle of flows but don't get me wrong here all of these arteries are equally important um all of them do the same thing they supply blood to a different part of the brain 
but in my opinion, these two, these three arteries basically give birth to the other arteries. So, I like to call them the main arteries, but all the arteries are doing the same exact thing of supplying blood to the brain. First, two main arteries that I want to talk about are called, are called the vertebral arteries. And these two arteries are called the vertebrals, like I just said. When the two vertebral arteries combine, they form the basilar artery, which is this big artery in the middle. So, those were the main arteries that you can find in the circle of Willis. So, like I said before, the vertebrals would be the leg of the system, uh, the basilar would be the body, and this area is like the face, so, and it's much, much easier when you remember it as a human to draw this out, when, or even if you just have to remember it from the top of your head. That was just the overview of the artery arteries that you can find in the circle of Willis. Now, let's move on to talking about each of these arteries in depth where I'll talk about what they, where they supply the blood to, where they can be found, and what will happen if there's a stroke in this art, in the, in the particular artery. Previously, I said I would talk about what will happen if there's a stroke in a certain artery? Well, to know, to understand that, you need to understand what stroke is. And if you already know what stroke is, feel free to skip to the next part of this video, which I will put the timestamp to. But if you do not know what stroke is, hang on and let me just give you a quick lesson on strokes. First, you need to understand that your arteries can be blocked up because of fatty substances or cholesterol buildup. And this is known as atherosclerosis. And atherosclerosis. And also, up the flow of blood. So, the blood cannot get past this area. So, if there's a organ, let's say, over here, let's say this is some organ then the organ is not getting supplied with blood and this is a pretty bad problem and sometimes the way the artery can be half blocked and half opened so there could be some blood going there but that's it won't be enough blood so the organ is gonna basically give up and stop working so if this happens in a artery that's leading to your heart then that's called a heart attack. And if this happens in an artery that's leading to your brain, then it's called a stroke. So basically, a stroke is atherosclerosis in a artery that's supplying your brain. So that was stroke in a nutshell. Coming back to the circle of Willis, coming back to the circle of Willis, now I want to talk about the anterior cerebral artery. So the anterior cerebral artery, which is right over here, is the anterior cerebral artery feeds most of the medial surface of the brain. By medial, I mean the inside surface that you can only see if you cut the brain in half down the middle. So that's called the medial view or medial surface of the brain. And this green line shows where the anterior cerebral artery goes through. So as you can see, it covers some of the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, and just a little bit of the occipital lobe. So any kind of blockage in this part of, in this artery, so any kind of stroke in this artery will have a big effect on the parts of your brain that make your decisions and the part of the brain that sets your emotional tone. So you might lose your emotions or your decision-making skills or other functions to stroke in this artery. Next, I want to talk about the middle cerebral artery. So you can see the middle cerebral artery inside this circle, the middle cerebral artery. It feeds a lateral surface of the brain. 
so the outside areas of the brain. It covers the frontal, the parietal, and temporal lobe. So if there's a stroke in this artery, it would affect your frontal lobe and especially your precentral gyrus and your postcentral. And for those of you who don't know what the precentral and postcentral gyrus are, our gyri that play a very important role in your sensory and motor skills. The precentral gyrus takes care of your motor skills and your postcentral gyrus takes care of your sensory skills. So if there's a blockage in the MCA, you might lose your motor and or your sensory skills. Now, I want to talk about the arteries that can be found at the bottom. So, we can see the basilar artery over here. We can see, we can assume, or we can actually just say that the vertebrals are coming, giving birth to the basilar, so they can be found somewhere over here or here. So it's just a rough sketch of where the vertebrals would be. And you would find the superior cerebellar artery over here. And you would f and you would find the posterior cerebral artery over here. So the posterior cerebral artery mainly feeds the occipital lobe and part of the temporal lobe. So if there is a stroke in the posterior cerebral artery, and it can lead to loss of vision and many other deficits in your visual field because the occipital lobe is a part of the brain that controls your vision. So if there's no blood supply to the occipital lobe, then it's going to be a big problem because you won't be able to see. Final three arteries that I want to talk about the superior cerebellar artery, the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, and the posterior cere inferior cerebellar artery. So, as you can see here, you can find the vertebrals and then the basilar. And the ba basilar gives birth to the ICA and the SCA. So, the SCA branches off from the basilar and the ICA also branches off from the basilar artery, but the PICA or the posterior inferior cerebellar artery branches off from the vertebral. Now, all these three arteries supply blood to the cerebellum. So that was the main, that was the in depth review of the arteries, and that was it for today's video. I hope you learned a lot about the Circle of Willis and what the arteries do. I also hope you enjoyed this video. I'm always open to comments, questions, and or suggestions. So check out my blog at brainyhearts.wordpress.com. The Brainy Heart signing off. I'll catch you later in the next video.